Hi, this is Not the Girl Next Door show, and I have Lovely Silent with us today. Can you guys uh, introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about the band? Yep. So, I'm Hyde. I'm the guitarist and co-founding member. And my name is Ike, and I'm the vocalist and the founding member. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're from the band Lovely Silent, and we're based out of uh, Chicagoland in Illinois. So how did you guys meet? How did you guys get together, and what made you decide to uh, to do this band together? Well, guys, we, we met in the hospital when my mom first me, being the <laughs> younger brother. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, <laughs> we grew up together. But, yeah, no, uh, we're brothers. So, um, yeah, we, we were in a couple bands before Lovelace Island, and we kind of, just kept on upgrading and upgrading until we were doing something that we love. Yeah, that's pretty much how we met. And then as for the other band members, like our drummer, uh, Abraham, we met him in one of our previous bands, and when that brand broke up, we all just founded this band, Lovely Sound. So that's how, that's how that happened. And we've been friends for a very long time. <laughs> Now, for the listeners like who haven't sense. heard you guys, uh, what kind of sound do you guys encompass? What kind of music would you go to describe yourself as if, for people who had never heard your music before? Well, the technical, the technical like genres would be post-hardcore and metalcore mm -hmm. um, that we really cover, and and I would th I would throw rock in there, just like hard rock. But um, yeah, for really our music is for like fans of Asking Alexandria, Memphis Mayfire. Uh, mm -hmm. Of Mice and Men. Those okay. are some some big bands that we are very influenced by and sound similar to, at least we think. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely I would definitely say post hardcore as well. Um, I have to admit, like I'm kind of old school, so it kind of took me a minute to get into music like this, like because uh, you know Fair I enough. grew up, I grew up on some Pantera and things like that, so it was you know all not I never really pushed into like metal, but then when I first heard like music where there's clean vocals or melodic vocals and then heavier aggressive vocals. I was like, what is this? You know, years back, I was like, what is going on? You know, but it grew on me. And, uh, yeah, I think The Plot in You was probably the first band that I liked like that. Um, yeah. I, I like Land in Tours by himself too. But, uh, yeah, I love it. I love, I love your guys' sound. Um, so you yeah. kind of went over some of your musical influences. Um, let's talk some more about your musical influences, like that helped shape you guys, uh, um, the sound that you have now. Yeah, um, when we were, like, younger, um, we grew up a lot of, like, uh, I don't know, rock, like Skillet, I don't know, Breaking Benjamin, Three Days Grace, um, bands like that, um, and, and, a lot, and a bit of punk, like Rise Against and uh, My Chemical Romance. But... Um, th just that's kind of like in our background, like all that music is just like there. I don't know. And then now, like over the last few years, we've both really gotten into like metalcore and metal and like bands like Of Mice and Men and and stuff like that. I don't know. <laughs> We're also influenced by other like. It's it's kind of cool because my my brother he can tell you like we're influenced by different like bands and different, like even different genres and stuff, and that kind of comes out in our writing when we're writing metal music, but our influence is coming from, like, classic rock or, you know, jazz even sometimes. Kind of yeah. cool. Like, for me, um, I'm influenced a lot by, like, Frank Sinatra and, like, Sam Cooke and even, like, Jim Croce, like, all these random, like, old, like, older music. Yeah. So that's where, like, a lot of, like, my influence comes from. Because I think it's really cool to incorporate, like, those, even, like, those, uh, like the rhythm you would find in that classic music into metalcore that gives a whole new fresh like perspective on it. So. Completely understandable. Now, when you guys actually do write music, you you said that both of you guys write, or so do, does yeah. is there two writers? How, like, do you guys just get together and throw it together? Does one person like write the musical aspect of it for any instrumental parts of it, or how does it work? Is it complete collaborative? Yeah. Or yeah, the 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 writing kind of varies how we do it. Like, 
sometimes it'll be my brother here, he'll just, uh, he'll have like a rant and he'll just start writing stuff down, things like emotions he has or something about a situation. And he'll send me this like, just big long <laughs> text of words. And I'll just start picking it apart and turning it into lyrics. And it's cool because like, I just get inspired by like having some kind of content and then just start writing a song off of what he was talking about. Right. Um, and then other times it's just I have something in my head and I want to write down some songs and lyrics. And then we'll meet up and he'll just, he'll have some guitar riffs he's been working on and we'll just put them together. And then when we, the whole band comes together to write, we just start, you know, playing stuff, trying different things and see how things work out. And so far it's worked out pretty good. It's a good process. Yeah, and then, like, uh, obviously, like, when you get into the studio with, like, producing yeah, stuff, they kind of yeah. pick it apart and make it commercial ready. But, um, yeah, huge shout-out to uh, Jake Jones and Robert Venables for being awesome. Yeah, they produced their EP. Yeah. did a great job. Sweet thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you guys put it all together and get out and do a live show, how does that feel to see people like rocking out to your music or like singing your lyrics and you know everything come to fruition like when you go to play a concert? Yeah, best way I can describe it is that meme of the grizzly bear surfing on the shark while shooting like two machine guns. <laughs> That's the best way to say Pure adrenaline. Yeah. No, it's really cool because, like, when you see somebody, like, just, like, so engulfed in the music and, like, actually going all out for it, it's really cool, like, because it's something that you've worked really hard and you get to see it pay off. And not only that, but, like, with our music, we are very, uh, very intentional about what we write. And we try and, like, bring hope to the people um, and it's cool to see people come up to us after a show and like actually ask us questions about what we were writing about and what those songs mean and we get an opportunity to like kind of spread some hope. So. No, I have a question. Yeah, was, and, and, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say there's, there's just the best feeling in the world when people like know your lyrics and stuff and yeah. we and, and when you can like you have this power on stage. As a vocalist, there's a power that if you, if you have a commanding presence, you can, like, control people. I know it sounds weird, but when you say, like, I want to see a mosh pit or I want to see a circus pit or something, and they do it, yeah, that's, like, the coolest feeling, and it's, like, <laughs> so awesome. I know it sounds kind of weird, to me, you know, but it, it's pretty awesome. It's a good feeling. Well, I actually have a question for you as a vocalist because – so. I've, I've been watching a lot of post-hardcore bands lately, and um, Afterlife is one of them. I'm actually going to see them um, on Saturday. And uh, it's, I think it's really hard. I think it's a really hard sub- subgenre to do because, and, you, and that's what I kind of want some insight on, because vocally speaking, I mean, you go through the motions of, like, most vocalists do the hardcore parts, and then they do the melodic parts both. So, how is that on you? Because I know with Afterlife, when I watch some of their live shows, because I've never seen them live before, they use, like, backing tracks for some of the... Because I can't imagine what a strain on your voice that would be to do those heavy parts, like, all the time, you know, day in and day out. And do you find that challenging, or...? Oh, it's definitely challenging, for sure. Um, yeah, it's it's a little intimidating, to be honest. When I first started... Like, we used to be in the little, like, so- uh, softer rock, um, alternative rock stuff. And I, when I first started singing, I was just, you know, just singing, no, nothing really heavy. Um, and when I decided, when we founded this band in, in 2015, or no, 2017, sorry. <laughs> well, um, when we founded this band, I was like, well, okay, so this is the genre we want to go for. This is the kind of sound we want. And I realized that, you know, I love this music and I wanted to play it, but I realized that someone had to step up and be the vocalist and do, and we wanted to be one of those bands where it wasn't two singers, it was just like one singer doing it all. Mm-hmm. I realized it had to be me. And that was like a really scary thing because I was like, I've listened to these bands like Memphis Mayfire and they're super impressive, like these singers like Manny Mullins who can just like do it, they do both and like they do it well. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm that good. I've only been singing for like, you know, a year. And it was just super intimidating, but... um I don't know, in the past year and a half or whatever, I really just, I used to play guitar. I really haven't played a guitar in like a year and a half because I've just been like focusing on 
like learning how to sing, <laughs> like right. do the, to do this like right with the harsh vocals and stuff. And uh, it's it's really just a process of learning. Like I, you know, I find YouTube videos. I find like I have an instructor that kind of, kind of helps out with like learning how to like do it properly so I don't destroy my voice. Yeah. And that's kind of like a longer process. It's easy to just yell, but to do it to do it properly is key. So I don't know. I've just been learning how to do it like properly, and I'm in a pretty good place now. It used to be terrible for sure. <laughs> Sounded like I was like dying. Dying goose. Yeah. It was like the uh, goat. Scream. Yeah, yeah, that app. Yeah, it, but it's it's for sure it's it's intimidating. It's, it's very hard, but I can go for you know, I don't know. When we do rehearsals, sometimes I'm screaming and singing for you know three hours straight, and I'm okay. That's like where my endurance has become. So I feel like once you get into it, and you're consistent about it, and you're like working out your you know because your voice is like a muscle. Yeah. Um, once you're consistent about it, and you can build up endurance, and then it's no problem. And I don't actually know. Answer that <laughs> yeah, and I was just thinking, I, you know, as a fan, you don't really think about that kind of stuff. I mean, you go to hear the music, but then uh, when you watch videos on YouTube and you actually see the bands perform live, and, you know, it's just, just oh, man, why are they using those backing tracks and stuff like that? And it's like, well, they kind of have to because, you know, in, in every case, I mean, the studio, you have time to, like, edit and and make things sound like they're supposed to but when you're out there live yeah I can see how that would take a lot of 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 training or a lot of coaching or a lot of practice more so than like somebody who sings melodies or heavier stuff you know because it's such a range it's such a range of of of, you know sound vocally so yeah yeah Uh, and we do use backing tracks but I don't we use a just a few spots of the vocals. I try and use as yeah, a few but, few as possible because I really want to be. None of the main parts are yeah in the track. It's all right. just like harmony. Right. And, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I sing like every part of the song, effect. but only the harmonies and, and yeah major vocal effects. Because I just want to honestly, I'm, maybe I'm a little egotistical, but I just want to be the best. So I don't want to have a fail day where I can like trust the tracks are gonna cover up for me live. I just gotta be that good, you know. That's not egotistical at all. I mean, as a fan, I would rather hear, you know, uh, indiscrepancies or 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 you mess up or it not be 100% perfect all the time than than to hear those backing tracks like underneath the music. You know, as a fan, that's what I personally think. So I think that's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, if I was paying for a ticket, that's what I would want. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Right. So do you guys have any crazy fan stories or crazy concert stories to tell us about any of the shows? Because I can imagine some of your shows can be a, you guys are a bit high energy. <laughs> some of the shows can be a little bit brutal. <laughs> I guess, well, uh, I guess we have, I mean, we we shared a stage uh, a couple months ago with um, Fight the Fury. I don't know mm-hmm. if you know who they are, but. Yes, I do. You guys can still at John Cooper. Yeah, his, like, side metal band. Metal band. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we shared it with them. We opened for them. That was pretty cool. Um, and we got pretty intense mosh pit going. That's kind of what I was, like, alluding to earlier. Like, I told them to go, and they and they went, and it got pretty rough. It got pretty rough. But, I mean, that's probably the craziest thing. We don't have any, like, stalker fans really a couple okay but no, nothing to write home about it just i mean a couple of people but nothing nothing like somebody trying to like you know attack us or you know pull our clothes off or anything we're not we're not that cool yet all our fans are pretty cool we do have very chill very cool fans um very respectful yeah but now, they're also not do a lot on do you guys do a lot huh? on social media Sorry, do you do a lot on social media? Like, uh, uh, do the fans like follow you on social media to a T? And you guys, do you guys do a lot with like Facebook or Instagram, Twitter, things like that as well? Instagram mostly. Um, it's kind of a thing where we're trying to like, you know, see where technology is headed and how how the music business is changing and uh, and how social media is changing. And trying to like predict what's going to be the next biggest thing and where we should be as a band and like promoting. And honestly, Instagram has been, I think Instagram's really where we're investing most of our time and money. And where we've gotten the most interaction, the most, uh, it's the most <clears throat> profitable for us fan-wise. 
and we've been and we've been steadily growing our fan base yeah. on Instagram, especially all all of them, Facebook, Twitter, all of it, but Instagram especially has been the biggest. And we have a pretty good following now, especially yeah. since where we were a year ago. So yeah, definitely. Now, if you guys could pick the ultimate tour, and you could pick any bands to tour with, and they could be current bands, they can be bands from back in the day, dead or alive, it doesn't matter. Who would you guys want to build the ultimate tour with? I think for me. It'd be very different yeah. for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> I'd want to go on tour with like Elvis. And but as this band, you'd want to tour with Elvis? It would make no money. <laughs> I think it'd be cool though. Well, Elvis would bring people. No, um, <laughs> no, as far as like realistic but not realistic genre wise, I would want to tour with Of Mice and Men pre Austin leaving the band. No disrespect to the new <laughs> Of Mice and Men, but I love Austin. Um, and then asking Alexandria not to say fire with war, that I prevail. For sure, yeah. I guess it's not too far from what I would have said. I was going to say I Prevail, Wade Warren and Attila would be a really yeah, sick yeah. tour. And maybe like Born of Osiris in there or uh, Silent Planet would be really cool. I think those are good fits. I mean, I think that all of those bands would be a good fit for you guys to, to you know, be in with as well. Any of the bands was- that's previously mentioned? It would also be kind of cool to tour with like an EDM artist or something like Skrillex or something would be cool. I think that could turn out well. Yeah. Like a good mix, like to get the EDM people into right, the yeah. music too. So do you guys mm-hmm. have any tours in store or what does the rest of 2019 have in store for the band? 2019. Glory. Yeah. Pure glory. Nothing, uh, confirmed tour-wise. We are in the studio currently shooting demos. Um, we're shooting them back and forth with our good buddy and producer, Jake Jones. Wait, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. but, uh, we're, we're really trying to focus on building a fan base before like, going on tour because like, you need to be able to make money on the tour. And mm-hmm. like, you might get like 20 people that will come buy your shirt but you need something like people that are there for you, not just because they coincidentally like you. So, right. That's what we're doing. Yeah, we're really focusing on like building. So for this year, we're really focusing on building like an internet presence, um, YouTube mostly, and, and and social media, and releasing whatever new music we're releasing. Um, like we're recording it right now, really. But um, what we're planning on releasing is just going to be like. I don't know. We haven't decided yet, I guess, but we're probably just going to be releasing some singles and see what people are liking with our new, like new music and stuff. And then just pushing that through YouTube and social media. So will you guys release and like then, most bands well, have been doing, like single by single by single too? Yeah, it's a, it's like I don't know what it's, yeah. I don't know why, but was, I mean, yeah, <laughs> like right now the music CDs industry, are out. <laughs> the music industry is kind of like the wild west right now. Like there's no rules. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But somebody's got a, got a good way to do stuff, so might as well try stuff. So. Right. It doesn't, like, CDs aren't selling like they used to, so there's really no point in doing an album, yeah. because that's the worst of the CD is it's got multiple songs on it. But people are used to streaming, um, which they only listen to three songs off of an album anyway. So. <laughs> yep. Their attention spans time. have lessened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so why spend a ton of money on a whole album do a couple of singles, and that way you also get to really narrow in on what people are like. Unless, of course, there's a record label out there listening. Yeah. <laughs> we won't say no to an album. Well, that's good. <laughs> Well, this Sweet is up. where you uh, are guys mm-hmm. going to plug what you do have right now. Where can people find your music, your merchandise? Do you have a website? You know, we discussed that you are on social media, but where can people find the majority of your stuff when they want to purchase music, purchase your merchandise, or whatever you guys have available? Yeah. Our website is currently down for maintenance, so okay. you can't go there. <laughs> but if you want to find uh, 
if you want to follow us, we, we encourage you to go follow us on Instagram primarily. That's where most of our content is going to be. If you want to find our music, it is sold wherever music is sold. Spotify, Spotify. iTunes, Amazon. Yeah. Pandora, all those uh, great places. Um, we, yeah. And as for, like, merch and stuff, uh, just private messages over on one of our social medias at Lovely Silent Music. Um, except for on Facebook where it's just Lovely Silent. www. Really did get the memo there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Any on Facebook? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So we would really and YouTube, obviously. Yeah, YouTube. Um, YouTube. <laughs> Go check out our singles again. Uh, yeah. The music video for it's pretty dope. Um, our friend Adrian Vieco did that. She's awesome. <laughs> Adrian, <laughs> message me. <laughs> okay. Well, I agree. That yeah, is the that's song. That's the song that I found, and uh, that's the song that I've been playing on Rock Ridge Radio for the past little bit now. So, I agree. Okay, did you listen to the rest of the EP? I listened to everything you guys sent me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying that I, that, sh- I that shouldn't be my if favorite one? Or? It, well, yeah. Which is your favorite one? Yeah, that's what I was the say. game. Yeah, that's the first song I heard, and that that yeah. was the. Yeah, that was the song that I liked, <laughs> liked over. I, why is there some consensus that that's not the the one, the standout one, or something? No. Okay, so this is where I might be the only person who's like this, and I'm not, you know, hating or anything. I just it's not my favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I like um, as I fall is my favorite song on the EP, but um, first, I mean, I like them all. Obviously, I wrote them, but. Um, <laughs> It's just funny. No, a lot of people really like the song. I'm very honored and flattered that people do like it. And it's getting, I'm happy that it's yeah, at least sure. one of my songs. I'm too scared. No, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. For when sure. I talk to so, bands, they're, they're always surprised because they're like, they always yeah, have in mind to what they think. One. Well, what they think is going to be, you know, one, the song that hits the hardest or hits the, you know, is the most popular. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the bands will say, well, we never thought that that one was going to be the one that was a stick out song. So. Yeah, for sure. I thought it was going to be I Am Alive, but I was wrong. Yeah. I don't know which one it is right now. I think it's the top song. Yeah, like Spotify. On, yeah, so we have, like, we kind of keep up on our own music, which is, I don't know if it's not specific or not, but no, I do it. <laughs> but, yeah, every so now and then we'll, like, go and look at our thing. I think it is Losing Play is not the top right now. So play that one. No, I'm just kidding. Do whatever you want. Okay. Okay. I'm just kidding. Well, when you guys have new music or you guys have anything coming out, I would love to share it. Or if you guys want to come on the show to talk about new stuff you guys have going on, I appreciate you guys coming on the show tonight. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Yeah.